Welcome back. Well, after about 14 months of not having the SL, uh, I think I've done a video on this car briefly, but it's been a long time. Uh, it's back from the body shop. Uh, this is actually, uh, it's, it's a family car, but it's my dad's. Um, and he crashed into somebody just commuting home from a dinner or something like that. And it took forever to find like the glass lens bising on headlights. I do have the marker. It's actually sitting inside the car because it started flapping around on the drive home, which is super cool. But yeah, it's got, uh, the bumper was like money green from like a 96 SL 500. The grill and hood are actually from a 90, I think a 95 SL 320. So is that fender. And they actually were in a light engine fire, so they had some work to do there. Um, it, I got really lucky, because these are actually really hard to find pieces. That's a magnesium grill. And then the later bumpers are always super hard to find too. And these lights were only offered 96 to 2002, and nobody optioned them, so they're really, really tough to find. And of course, it's a V12, so every single part in it is not only unique to the SL, chassis, so you can't buy an S, like a W140 part, you have to buy a 129 part, but it's also, of course, unique to the 600, the V12. So, you can see the hood used to be white, and they primered the fire damage portion. You can see the prior fire damage on the hood, and it's a little tacky. I'll probably end up um, doing a little bit of jamming or whatever you want to call it, just to make sure that ends up being the right color. They did a nice job on the fender and the core support. This is all welded in um, out of a, a 320. And I'm actually noticing they didn't put in my fans. All right, there's a lot more to this that I'm gonna have to figure out. I'll have to check the trunk. Maybe they left them in there. Um, but this thing, I think it's got a vacuum leak right now. It's driving really, really poorly. Um, so I'll check the bottom side of this boot. Hopefully there's no crack in the mass airflow sensor. We'll have to see. I drove it down here in limp mode and there's no way this thing was making more than like 40 horsepower. Also, got some torn wires down here. A lot of work to do yet. Air conditioning's unplugged. Wow. Well, it's a body shop. I didn't expect them to do the electricals and the mechanicals perfectly. It got down here, it's in one piece. It's not totaled, thank goodness. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I'm gonna run the check engine codes right now with that filthy little reader to see what's going on with the limp mode. And then I'll get it on a battery maintainer. Oh, just enough room. I guess I gotta find out where the port is now. Sorry, the screen is really bad on this. I don't know what that whistling is. Scary. Okay. There we go. P0443, P1580, P1522P, pending code, and P0700, pending. Interesting. Okay. I'm going to erase it. All right. Definitely feels like six cylinders. Check engine lights immediately back on. Interesting. Well, I'm gonna Google those codes real quick. See what they come up with. So the codes were evaporative emissions. That would lead me to believe vacuum leak, which is what it sounded like. I'm actually gonna take this boot all the way off here in just a second. Um, but the, the mass airflow was also filthy with body shop dust. So I took that off and I don't have a math cleaner, which is a bummer, I have it at home, but I used a non-residue brake parts cleaner, which it's probably a no-no, but again, that's all I've got here. Uh, then I had codes for variable cam solenoids, but this is not a variable cam motor. 
So that was a pending code. Then I also had uh, a trans computer malfunction, also a pending code probably from when the idle was at like 200 and it was disengaging the transmission just to save it. Um, and then there was a throttle body malfunction. So what I did is unplug the battery. I shorted the positive and the negative together just to clear everything out. And now I'm gonna go in and turn the key to position two. And I'm gonna wait for these throttle bodies to resynchronize, which it should do automatically within two minutes or something of the key being on. So we're hearing the throttle bodies. Oh, I think we may have a bad throttle body actually. I don't realize how hard that got pushed into the cover. I might pull that off and see if it's seized. Hmm, I didn't see that before. Well, that might be part of my problem. Shoot. I'm gonna try to super glue that back together and then I'll start shopping for a used one. That's too bad. I hope that's the same part number as an M104. It wouldn't surprise me if it was. Hmm. That took quite the hit. Well, unfortunately, the gear was pancaked in there so long, it's a little bit bent, and it's nylon, fiberglass, whatever, so it's not bending back. Uh, if it gets me through a while, just to make sure there's no other problems, I'm fine with that. I just looked up a used one, it's only like 150 bucks, so I'm going to put it back on there and see if I can make it do the relearn, or even just start it and see what happens, I don't know. Well, since I'm just one guy, I'm gonna go turn the ignition and we'll see if this DK moves. That is a horrible noise. I should, oh. I think I just relearned the closed position. Sorry, I know this is not overly gripping to watch. I guess I'll just let you know what happens, if anything. Maybe I should just try starting it? At least they're both making the same noise. I don't know, let's fire it up. The exhaust is extremely smelly. I'm gonna open the door a little bit. It's probably a good sign. I think it's burning a ton of fuel out of the engine as the cats warm up. <clears throat> wow, that's gross. <clears throat> really, really nasty. I'm actually gonna back it up to the door a little bit more here. No check engine light, that's good.
see what this looks like outside. <laughs> Funny. Wow. Just pouring, pouring, pouring. Lots and lots of fuel. <laughs> oh, jeez. I think I gotta go open up the other door a little bit. <clears throat> This poor thing, man. This engine is resilient. <laughs> if I was beat that hard, I would not be happy. <clears throat> She's running better, though. Still a lot of adjustment going on, and I'm, I'm kind of lucky, because I'm pretty sure um, the portion of the gear that broke off is actually the high throttle position. So, I mean, this thing would be totally fine, I think, to drive around a little bit with the uh, little dome fixed. But right now, boy, it is just smoking me out. <clears throat> well, there's my makeshift exhaust getter ridder ver thingy. It works. <clears throat> I'm gonna let this thing get all the way up to temperature, and right now, we are not even close. <clears throat> Sounding a lot better. So I cut back the sheathing here. One piece of wire damage. That's from the crash, not from the mice. And back here, we've got several wires that are nibbled. One that was eaten clear through to replace a section of that. And down here as well, you see one half, one half. I'm gonna fix those two with a little bit of extra wire slack and then uh, check them all again to make sure I don't have more broken wires. These are really buried in there, unfortunately, but uh, I see a couple more that are bare back there. Like right in the middle of your screen there. So that'll be a little tougher to deal with. I'm trying to get some electrical tape in there maybe. Oh, mice, mice, mice. So I'm pretty sure this is fully stock and how it's supposed to be arranged. I fixed all those wires and, uh, and I'm gonna start it and see if any of the warning lights have turned off or not. And even if they haven't, I'm probably just gonna pull the battery back out, harness tape all this good stuff with the Tesco BMW harness tape, which is way better and rodent resistant. Resistant. Let's see how that goes. <clears throat> well, fired it up. The can fault is gone. I think we're good, so. I got some of my Tesco harness tape. Made that look at least a little prettier. I'm gonna do one more main loop on here just because I pulled it. Um, and then start shoving all the modules back in and I think we're good. Um, there's just so much crap in here. I mean, I get it's a V12 SL from the 90s, but if it's CAN bus, it shouldn't have this many wires. 